The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmet will be the one ruler of the Romans. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about me. And that's the real truth. John 7, 18 reads, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh of his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Jesus was seeking his Father's glory. It was not about Jesus. It was about his father. So if his father was here, who would it be about? It would be about his father. And that's the thing that's going to kill these nations. Because we've been taught for everyone to just do their own thing and for everyone to be about themselves. But no, at the last day, it is not about you at all. It's not. It's all about the father. And this is the thing right here with the cleanup man. The cleanup man, earth is his. This is his earth for him to clean it up. With the help of Allah is like this. Them is your niggas. Them is your niggas. Now think about it. If I put you in charge of a planet, whose niggas is these? These is your niggas. You deal with them however you choose. Okay? They yours. They belong to you. Okay? They ain't my niggas. And that's how it is when you are serving another man's God. In the religion of Islam, you serve in my God. So these niggas don't belong to Allah, okay? They belong to me. And this is the reason why God paused the time for one man. He didn't pause the time for you. He didn't pause the time for you. He paused the time for al Mahdi because al Mahdi is his servant. And I am the messenger of Allah. And we're going to go over into John 8.50. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Now Jesus is saying I'm not that person. He said I do not seek my own glory. So why is the world glorifying Jesus? Why is it all about Jesus? That's a mystery. If everything Jesus did was not to seek his own glory, why are we all glorifying Jesus here? That's the question that has to be answered in this hour. And simply put, everything Jesus did was to glorify his father. It was all about his father. It was all about his father. So with this message right here in the house of David, it's not all about Jesus. It's not all about you. It is all about the father. The father has to reclaim that title. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I don't fear what man can do to me. I'm not worried about what man can do to me. I'm not worried about what you can do to me. I know for a fact it's not about you. And that's what hurts you because this world has made it all about you and making it all about Jesus literally made it all about you as well. But right now, the father is here to do judgment. And right now, the I am preaching is what's been a confound the nations. Now, let's keep going. Let's go to John 14, 24. The book of John 14, 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. 
So the word that Jesus spoke did not belong to him. That is very clear in this verse. There's other scriptures, but I want to focus on this one. He also said, he that loveth me not, keep not my sayings. Now, if you don't love me, then that means you don't do what I tell you to do. And a perfect way for you to know if a person loves you to watch and see if they do what you tell them to do. Now, this ain't just for everybody. This is talking about the father. The father was speaking through the prophet Isa. And he said, he that loveth me not does not do what I tell them to do. And the father is letting you know that he is the source. It's all about him. It wasn't all about the messenger. It was all about the giver of the message. And people idolize every messenger. We have this same idolatry in Islam. Right now, the people are idolizing Muhammad, not knowing that there is a Muhammad behind your Muhammad. There was an al Mahdi who was speaking through the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And many people, when they find out the real truth, they go run from Islam. And God has put us all in the ultimate test by arriving to this earth. This was the ultimate test because right there in the book of Hebrews, it tells you, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Now, you got to watch who you're talking to. Because let me tell you something. Let's just say you run in your mouth, you run in your mouth, you run in your mouth. And then this person you was running your mouth to was the father. What you think going to happen to you? What, what you think the end is for you? That's why you got to be careful. You got to be careful because everything has to go into account. Now, there are two spies here on this planet who's not from earth with no sin whatsoever. Okay. Now, your sins is going to be brought forth at the day of judgment. You don't have a clean slate. Everything you do is going to be dealt with. It's going to be dealt with. And that's why you have to have good works. You have to have good works because your sins is going to be brought forth on the day of judgment, but not for two spies. Okay, there's two spies down here and they are without sin. And you got to be careful. Who you talking to? Because when you spit up, boy, it's really going to fall into your face. And the test was the father came down here as a human being, walking around like a normal person, blending in with the crowd. And then he woke up only to realize who he was. And that is my testimony. I am here to judge. Jesus said he did not come to judge. He said he didn't. He said there's one who comes to judge, and that's al Mahdi. According to the religion of Islam, there will be a black stone brought forth on the day of judgment. And yes, I am that Rockefeller. I am that black stone with two eyes and a tongue. And I will testify to all those who have touched me in sincerity. Now, you can just keep playing games. You can just keep letting life pass you by, but just remember, everything you do is going to be brought into account, and that's coming soon. This is coming on 34. Now, let's do a little bit of numerology. First of all, hands down, I am the only person right now currently teaching that 2034 is the end. My initials is DLC. DC is 43 or CD is 34. It's all in my name. Even my last name, Clay, if you push the C next to the L, it's day. I am day day. I'm here to announce the judgment coming for you on 2034. You can't escape. I pray every time you see 34, you realize you're in. It's coming soon. Now let's look at the name Allah and let's see. This name, it equals 34 exactly. Now, A-L-L-A-H. Each letter is a number. A is 1. L is 12. L is 12. A is 1. H is 8. That equals 34. It was Allah who revealed to me 
that the end is in 2034. And I know for a fact that bothers you some type of way. Because how could one person be able to predict the end? Well, your problem is you don't believe the Bible. You say you love the Bible, but you don't believe it. The prophet Isa told us that no man knows the day or the hour. He said not even the sun, not even the angels. He said, but only his father, okay, which is in heaven. At that time, I was in heaven, okay, and I came down here in 1982, and I'm going to keep that testimony and that testimony is going to bother you why because Allah singled me out okay he loved me he singled me out I know that might torment you but he singled me out and I came down here supernaturally that's how I know for a fact that Al Maddie is me I knew it automatically and I didn't learn about Al Maddie until this year and Allah has been giving me this knowledge so 2034 is the end I'm a singer. I've been making CDs. 34, 34, 34, 34. I got over 30 albums. 34, 34. CD equals 34. C is 3. D is 4. That's 34. 34 is the end. Okay? September is going down. Just like those twin towers that fell. 9-11, 9-11, why do you think we have 9 as an emergency number? This is the Father's mercy and grace, letting you know that one day he will return to his planet in the third and fourth generation with the sign and the time of nine years remaining. And the 11 in 9-11 is in Revelations chapter 11, where it talks about the last two witnesses okay this is all in the bible this is all in your book you need to blow the dust bunnies off your bible okay blow the dust bunnies off your bible and read it and numbers keep in mind has stronger prophecy than even words because let me tell you something people lie but numbers don't lie numbers don't lie we have a whole book in our bible called numbers now ponder on that think we have a book in our Bible called Numbers. Numbers do not lie. I challenge you, go to your Bible. Go to Isaiah 34. It says, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved in verse 4. This is the only time in the Bible where it tells us that the heavens is going to be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the tree. Right here in Isaiah 34. Now you can go to your Quran and go to the book 34. Which is going into the book of forgiveness, okay? I call it the book of bye-bye. Say bye-bye. That's how I say it. And you can go there. It tells us that the hour is going to inevitably come upon you. Now, look, numbers don't lie. People lie. But numbers don't lie, bruh. Numbers do not lie. And it's going to be the end. So I just gave you a short message because I love doing exhortations every day. Because I know there have to be some word-loving people out there on this planet somewhere. There has to be people who love the word, okay? Now, I'm here to reach out to people who love God's word. I'm calling you back to God's word. I don't know what happened. You used to be excited, but then you got swept up in the flow of this world. Let me tell you something. Real prophecy is here. 2034 is the end. It's coming soon. I pray you are ready. Okay. I am day day with the time. I am flavor flav with the clock. I'm the black man walking around with the clock. Okay, now some people say, oh man, why you talk about black people, black people, black people? It's our time. The white man had his time. The Arabs had their time. Right now is the black and the brown woman's time. Right now is the black and the brown. Okay, it's going down right here in the nation of Judah and it's going down in Mexico. 
Okay? It's our time. Y'all had your turn. Okay? It ain't about races. I'm not trying to magnify races, but you've been locking me out of my own house. This is my kingdom. Okay? According to the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, 5, and 6, the owner of the vineyard is a black man. The Bible says I'm black and comely. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Your Bible says I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. Now, Kedar is the Arabs. As the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. Now in this verse is going into the racism of the Arabs because a black man is their Madi. Now I'm going to close with a song entitled This Is The End. I did this song about 2009. Even when I was in Christianity, this song is so powerful because I'm literally saying, I got to let you know this is the end. Now, at this time, I did not know I was going to be the guy to announce to the world the end. Before we used to begin, I got to let you know this is the end. Hold on, 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 hold on,